Welcome to another edition of the Sim Racing Garage. I am Barry Rowland, and in this episode we'll be reviewing the Club Sport Pedals V3 Brake Performance Kit, promising to deliver a stiffer and shorter travel brake pedal than the stock bumpers that come with the V3 can deliver. This is something that I wanted to test from the first time I used the stock brake pedal set on this set, as I do like a rather firm feeling brake pedal when driving cars. Can this performance kit really make a noticeable difference? Time to put it through the Sim Racing Garage review process and find out. So let's get to it. Now for a closer look at the Pedals V3 brake performance kit. Now, out of the box, even at its highest setting, as you can see here, I've got it all the way up as far as it can go, or supposed to go anyway. And it really, did, to me, didn't really improve the feel or as far as the stiffness of the pedal. It really just kind of limited the throw of it, right? Even though it does increase it a little bit, it's, yeah, even with it all the way down here, it just had more throw, but I kind of felt it didn't give, it was really weak at that position for me. And again, we have to remember here, we are entering the world of subjectivity here, as far as pedal feel, firmness of a pedal, uh, you know, that's totally subjective. Everybody's going to have their own idea about what they want out of this. So, enter this kit. So let's take a look at it. Okay, we got our little pamphlet. We can throw that away. No, just kidding. <laughs> but this is actually a, a pretty nice kit presentation, I must admit. And Fnatic usually, again, um, does pretty well with the presentation of their products. They spend the extra money for the presentation. And I know there's some guys out there say, well, quit spending money for all this great presentation and packaging and give us better parts on your, on your units. <laughs> so anyway, I just, I've seen a lot of that out there. But yeah, you got to admit, this is kind of nice. It tells us exactly what we have here. And we have three reds, three greens, and the bottom ones are 12s, which are 12 millimeter thick. And the top ones are 13 mil, which are going to be stiffer, supposedly. We're going to find that out. We've got this little PU foam piece, and that goes in no matter what we have as far as the bumpers in here. And we have a nice little bottle of lithium grease to grease these babies up before we put them in, because you want to make sure they, they're very well lubed so you don't have any stiction going on when you're using them. Yeah, the usual stuff there. But it's nice they gave us a bottle of lithium grease to get greasy with. <laughs> and yeah, we'll talk about what all these are going to do. And we're going to test them too. You know how we do it here. At, well, that's just not going to stand up, is it? We're going to test them and find out just how stiff they are. Now, we have the usual pamphlet of what to do and how to do your brake. We'll see all that as I do it. But the cool thing is, I thought it was cool anyway, they actually put a table in here to try to explain to you what means what. So it's kind of, it's, if I have a 13 and a 13 green, I go over and it's very hard, right? If I have a 13 green and a 12 green, it's just hard. So forth and so on, a 13 and a 13 red is medium, and a 12 red is soft. So we have four different combinations of soft, three of medium, two of hard, and one, only one of very hard. <laughs> and that's guaranteed that's what I'm going to want, and that's what I'm going to put in right away just to make sure that if, it, you know, if it's too stiff, I can always take it back out. But I got a feeling, yeah, it's going to be about right for me because of the brake pedals I'm used to. And remember, we have a 90 kilogram load cell in this brake pedal. So yeah, I think uh, we're going to want it to be pretty stiff. Right. So let's go ahead and pull these bumpers out of here. I'm going to take a, well, I'll just take them all out just to see how consistent these bumpers are. They're probably all cut from the same rod, these urethane rods they make up for this stuff when they're actually making it. And these are the smaller ones. I'll show you the example, comparatively speaking. And we'll also pull this guy out, the PU foam. And remember, that's going to go in first before any of this other stuff does. Let's just get this box out of the way for now. There you go, sit right there. Perfect. Now, here's a green 13 and a green 12. I think you guys can tell the difference in the diameters there, especially when you look at them this way. Right. So the reds are the same deal. We got a 12 and a 13, and it's easy to tell because they're red. But we're going to test these things out like we always do here at the SRG and find out how accurate the ratings are. We've got our shore gauge here that will tell us accurately, hopefully, the hardness on these bumpers. So we're going to start with the greens first, then we'll do the reds, keep all these guys together. And I'm going to start with this 12 mil and see how hard it is. I, I got a feeling it's going to be just as hard as those or close to it. 
But let's go ahead. And by the way, my mat here that I'm using, this rubber mat, is very, very dense, hard rubber. So, yeah, it's not actually, we can do a durometer test on that. And you can see it's 85, maybe. Yeah, something like 85. Well, it looks like it goes down because the cushion goes away as it compresses. So, it's pretty hard anyway. And we'll keep that in mind as we're doing these. But really what I'm looking for is consistency and a general idea of where the shore rating is on these. Right, so further ado here, let's do this. All right, that's, wow, that's a 94. You guys see that? In fact, let me get a little closer here. Do that again. 94. Yeah, it's about a 94. So that's a small green one. And we'll go to the bigger green one. And that's going to be, I'm taking these measurements from the center as good as I can get. So, wow, that's actually less hard <laughs> at 92 or 91 and a half, which is surprising me. Hmm, that's interesting. And go ahead and do this one. And, yeah, it's just above 90, 89, I would say. So, 89 versus 91. So, you know, a variance of two, I guess, is not too bad. I mean, how accurate do you really need to be when it comes to these bumpers? People ask me that, and I go, well, you know, as long as they're pretty close, I, I think you're, you'd be happy. What surprised me is this one, the smaller one, the diameter, is actually showing me a harder rate, durometer rate. And I, yes, it's consistent, 94. So it's a little bit more. So we might be using one of these small green ones with a regular green one if this is going to be harder. Interesting. Right, so... The red ones are supposed to be softer, so let's take a look at those and see how they're doing. And, yep, actually not that much softer. That's an 87. Hmm. And that's for the 13 mil. Get the other 13 mil. All right. And that's an 87 also. Huh, that's, at least they're very consistent. Those are right on. Now we get the little red one. The 12, and that's, yeah, it's harder too. So, at least it's, it's the same for both of the smaller ones. They're harder. So, yeah, that, uh, that makes me think again because it was supposed to be, according to our little diagram over here, a little different than that. If we put a, let's see, where's my small red one? There's a small red one with a green, or not a small green, that's what I want. Where's my 12 green? There it is. So a 12 green with a 13 green is supposed to be hard. See that? So I got a 12 and a 13. That makes it hard, not very hard. But according to this, then I should be mixing the small one. But maybe what's happening here is because this is thinner, it's going to allow it to expand in the barrel here of our brake. So that might be why it actually becomes a little softer because it's going to expand more when it gets crushed. At least that's what they're saying. But you know what? I'm going to try them both ways and see what comes up best. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that because at least, yeah, I want the hardest pedal I can get. And right now, you know, these, these this thing doesn't lie. So it looks like it's going to be these two guys are going to be what I'm after. So, and of course, we have to put this in no matter what we put in no matter what two we put in, because they're all the same height. You can see that there. They're all going to be the same height, so, yeah. Right, so, we know what the ratings are on them. Now we got to do is stick them in there, right? Easy enough. Now all we have to do, really, is disassemble this brake assembly. And I'm going to do that sideways a little bit here, so I try to get to where you guys can see what I'm doing here. Right. Now, first thing we got to do is, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to speed this up because we got to take this all the way down to be able to clear this rod out of this casing here. So we'll speed this up. All right, so now we have it all the way down. And now what we have to do is turn the pedals, get you guys a little bit of a wider angle here. And there is a screw in here. I'm going to need my hoodie wrench for this. There is a set screw on all these pedals, on these points where they attach to the pedal levers. These set screws are holding 
a steel rod in there so it doesn't slide sideways when we're using our pedals. So we're going to have to loosen that up to get that rod out. So it's just loosening it up. You're not taking it out. It's just a little set screw. A couple of turns, you're done. Now, this can be a little tricky, but I have a little way that I like to do this. And first off, there's the steel pin that we got to get out right here. Okay, so that'll loose, let this fly free. Set you free. Right, so I can push that with my finger just a bit, but it only comes out about two mils or so, right? Eighth inch. So what I'm gonna have to do now is get it to go the rest of the way. And I actually use a five mil hex wrench like that that has the bend in it. And I'll just put that over here where I've already started pushing it from and just kind of make sure you get it on in the hole because you don't want to scratch up your lever. And you can see I can just kind of push it there. You can use anything, but this is kind of bent 90 degrees, so it's, you know, we don't have any interference from this lever over here. So I'll just keep pushing it until I reach my limit on the wrench here. Let's put that away. Now I should just be able to pull it out the rest of the way with my fingers. There it is. And this is just a steel pin. And the set screw grabs it, and you can see there's some little marks in there where the set screw has grabbed it. Oh, well, that's showing up, but there they are. Right. Set that aside. Now, it says to drop this down, and that's one thing I meant to see. It just kind of dropped out of there. <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't have to do it ourselves. So it says you, you're supposed to pull this thing back. Let me go ahead and put that back up there. But you're supposed to pull this back, and then you know it, it lets it drop past that, but you can see how easy it, it did for me. It just came loose. So but there's another thing that you can actually do here. I kind of just dropped this down enough to where once you get it past there, you can actually just kind of pull it out. It kind of drops out really and tilt this back up straight if you want to. And be mindful of this brake pedal. It wants this lever up here wants to smash up against your casing and scratch it up if you give it the chance. This is the rod that came out. And you can see it's attached to another aluminum piece here that holds that steel pin. Once that goes in there, we got that set screw right that it holds it still so it doesn't go anywhere right easy enough we'll set that aside for now so now we have to get the old bumpers out and that's why they say rotate this downwards and i'm going to let this rest here i'm going to try to put my finger up here to keep this lever from whacking this thing and you can see we got lucky they just fell right out so let's go ahead and now i got to put them in so i'm going to rotate this up to actually put them in should be easier right like that and here's what came out one looks a little different than the other. And I know what you're asking. What is the durometer on these? <laughs> I don't know, you probably didn't ask that, but I'm gonna show you anyway. So let's see what these guys are coming up as. Yeah, that's not much. Maybe 60s. Yeah, a little bit less. Let's see how consistent they are. Yeah, pretty good actually. So these are 60s, and they're very, very soft, too soft for me. And we have, we're just going to set these aside and put them in a plastic bag, like they say in the instructions. I actually have a picture of a plastic bag. Already starting to get grease on my hands because obviously they're greasy because they were lubed up at the factory before they put them in. Now, I am going to put this guy in first, but we have to lube things up. And this is where the lithium grease comes in. And it's going to be messy. There's really, I don't think there's really a non-messy way to do this. But we're going to take one of the green ones, and we're just going to put this little bit of grease on there, because we're going to smear it all around. You don't need to saturate this thing. Am I getting focus here? Yeah. You don't need to saturate it, but you do need to get some grease on it. So come on, grease. There it is. I think that should be enough. Now set that one aside, because I'm going to grease them all at once with my fingers so that I can don't have to keep wiping them off. All right, so we get this one on. Should be good. And I'm just guesstimating here how much it needs to be. One more time. All right, set that aside. And like I said, there's no real e uh, clean way to do this or <laughs> non-messy. It's going to get grease all over your fingers. It is what it is here, guys. So yeah, get some grease on there, spread it around. That's all I'm doing. And then I will drop it in the hole. It's like loading the cannon. <laughs> and I'm going to use 
the bigger one first of the green ones. So we'll go ahead and slam this one all up. Oh yeah, that feels good. Nice and slimy. Let me drop that one in. Oh, I don't want to stick to my finger. Ah, what a mess. One more. And that's the little yellow one that's actually, as we saw before, stiffer than the other green one. Hmm. And we'll drop that in. Now we got grease all over our hands, but that's why we have this guy right here. Close and handy and ready to go. Now I do want to, before I get all the grease off my fingers, put a little bit back on here just for the heck of it because we've handled it and you want to make sure yeah it's slippery when it's sliding back and forth inside of there actually we'll put a little more on there you can never have too much grease by the way this is great that they include this stuff because you can also use it to maintain or manage maintenance on your brakes because just like any moving parts they need to be maintained you can't just drive your brakes or your pedals rather in general and not maintain them because you're just waiting for a disaster to happen. So yeah, you gotta pull them out, clean it out every, I do it about once every six months or so. Just pull everything apart, you know, not completely apart obviously, but the rubbing surfaces and put a fresh coat of lube on it, clean them off, and they should last forever. All right, so now we're gonna rotate this back down because obviously this motor is gonna be in the way. And I'm gonna kinda juggle this a little bit. Go ahead and get back in up there. And you can just kind of put these together at an angle first, and they kind of just mate together as you swivel it down. And there it goes. Right, so we're good to go now. So now all we have to do is slide this back up in the vicinity of the hole we want. It's already a lot stiffer. I can feel it. That's good. That's a good thing. And I also have a, another way of doing this that makes it a little bit easier because there's pressure now pushing up into this piece here that's obviously pushing against the lever. The lever is maxed out on the stop down here, so it can't go further forward anymore. So we're gonna have to press this back at the same time we try to get this guy back in, which by the way, keep putting my grease up here, I'm gonna need it. We should actually re-grease this if we've wiped anything off of it. Again, making sure everything's happy sliding around on that lever. There we go, just a thin coat, nothing big. Wipe it off my fingers here. All right, so let me turn this around so it's facing backwards. You guys can see what I'm doing. I'm going to start just by just kind of putting it in there like that. Now I'm trying to get my hands a little dry. Now, again, I got to relieve the pressure on this rod as I'm trying to push this in, right? So guess what comes in handy again? <laughs> my bent Allen wrench, right? So I'm going to stick that in there. And I actually can fit it in the aluminum piece that's on the end of this rod, right? And I'm going to pull it towards me, which is going to put pressure backwards against the rod, and I'm gonna push on this at the same time. So that's the idea anyway, to get it started. Once it's started, we can, we're okay. So I'm gonna kinda put my fingers like this and push back on it. Look at that, see how it goes in? So now it's in, I can actually take the wrench and set it aside. It should go the rest of the way, especially since we've lubed it up again. And it might help if it gets stuck or you might wiggle it a little bit from the pedal part here to help relieve some pressure back and forth. And sometimes that helps it going back in, just like that. Couldn't be easier. Right, no struggles here, <laughs> at least not yet. All right, now I think I'm done with my grease. I think I'm gonna go ahead and put the cap back on for good. Right. So now all we gotta do is one more thing. That is go ahead and tighten that set screw back up that we undid at the beginning of this procedure. Snug it up, you don't have to ratchet it down real hard. Just snug it up so it bites into the steel rod in there a little bit. And that should do the trick, I think. Motor's still good. Now, they say in the instructions that this is no longer a tension adjuster. This little dial thing here is basically to take slack out of the pedal. And you can see there's a little, I don't know if you guys can see how well you can see that, but there is just a little bit of slack in the pedal here. So I'm going to roll this out and that's obviously pushing this this little piston here that not piston but the cavity this barrel if you will back up onto that shaft and taking the play out that's the idea anyway so i'm going to go ahead and roll it until it gets hard to turn because i want to compress it as much as i can i think for what i the, the stiff pedal that i'm looking for here oh yeah 
that's better already much better and there's really there's still just a little bit of slack on that so let's see if I can how far I can turn this thing out they say it doesn't matter with the tension yeah okay now it's stopping it's getting hard to turn right there let's see what that does yeah that's hardly anything there and again that doesn't mean you're gonna like your pedal like this but it sure is a big improvement I can tell already I'm gonna like this yeah because I certainly didn't like it much with those other bumpers in there just you know it wasn't it wasn't stiff enough it just didn't feel like I like things to feel again just the way I like things to feel so now that we've done this we're all done all we've got to do now is mount it to the rig go over there and do some testing on it and see what we think about the different stiffness now remember we're also gonna to have to recalibrate manually recalibrate the pedals but I always manually calibrate anyway uh, I never use the auto calibrate because I just don't trust that stuff and it's much more accurate when you use the manual and it's really easy to use that manual calibration thing it's really nothing to it so yeah we're gonna go over there and calibrate the pedals and then drive them so here we are in Fanatic's USB pedals properties page or application this is where we calibrate our pedals you'll see I actually have it on the manual mode because I like to use the manual mode more than I do the auto I think the manual is more accurate and it really is very easy to use anyway so right away we'll see that we've got the clutch brake throttle and handbrake and you can see down here in the brake I've actually got I'm not even touching the pedal I have some blue bar in there which means that would mean in game I would have brake applied I don't want that obviously so we need to get that out of there plus I'm gonna rest my foot on the pedal so that I'm simulating driving the car without actually putting the pedal down and yeah you can see it even gets to be more because of the weight of my foot and my leg so what I'm gonna do is get rid of that and this is kinda like just adding a dead zone to your pedal and I'm just gonna click that and there it goes pretty quick so now when I'm resting my foot on the pedal we don't see any blue bar that means there's no brake activated and that's what you want but if I push on it you can see right away I'm getting some activation now I want to set the max on it I press it all the way to where I'm comfortable with the, with the force. In fact, I usually go a little bit further. And it's just about, actually, it's pretty good. I'm going to leave that there. Now, if it was down here somewhere, then I would set max and then save it. So everybody's a little different what you're going to feel in your brake pedals, how far hard you want to press yours. So, yeah, that looks good to me, though. I'm, I'm comfortable with that because, again, we're going to be setting, fine-tuning it, if you will, whenever we're in a game i racing is at a course or whatever the case may be r factor 2 we'll be fine tuning it from there so yeah that, that's good for me now throttle same thing if i rest my foot on the throttle yeah i'm not getting anything which is good well let me see here yeah you can see though i'm going past on the top when i hit the top my pedal still moves a bit if you're watching the pedal picture so the bar is full but yet I can still move my throttle pedal. So I need to fix that by hitting set max with the throttle all the way down to the stop. So now it should fill up just as I hit the stop. And there it is. Perfect. Now we'll go over to the clutch. Again, we don't have a handbrake, so clutch. I'm resting my foot on the clutch. Nothing going on there, which is great. Max clutch. Well, it's a little bit the same way the throttle was. See, you see how it's filled up there? But I can still push it down a bit. So I'm going to hit the set max on that one. And now it should stop it. There we go. Just like we want it. Perfect. Rest of my foot on the brake. Nothing going on until I'm pressing it. All right. That's how easy it is. That was quick. No, no frills here. It's just very simple application. I really like this because it's fast. It's accurate. And yeah, it just gets the job done and you can get on with having fun. Now for the driving impressions of using the brake pedal. As you can see, the pedal still travels pretty far when I'm hard on it even with the two green bumpers in there and the tension adjuster screwed out as far as I could I could get it to go. <laughs> so that's about it as far as the stiff as you're going to get, which isn't bad actually. I really didn't have any trouble uh, controlling the car rather under the braking zones, doing trail braking and threshold braking, and it actually felt pretty comfortable once I got used to it a little bit. It's a little bit less stiff than my normal pedal set, but really nothing to get me off kilter too much and I felt like I was doing the same lap times and being able to control the car just as well as with my other pedal set and yeah again I was I would like to have it even a little stiffer or at least have an option to go stiffer but again this is total personal preference we're entering the world of subjectivity here so you know my opinion obviously is not going to be the same as others really what you have to do is get this kit and use it I will say this 
I do feel like if you have a V3 pedal set, you do owe it to yourself, I think, to get this performance kit upgrade. It's $30, and I know it's another 30 bucks for the pedal set, or adding cost to the pedal set, rather. But I think in the end, it's worth it. It really improved it for me anyway. Now, if you like a real soft pedal on your brake pedal, then you may not agree with that. But I think most would agree that it really firms up the pedal into different zones than the stock bumpers can that makes it actually more comfortable to use for me too because the pedal throw is not quite as much either. But anyway, we'll go ahead and get on to the final thoughts and we'll discuss it more over there. Final thoughts on Fanatic's Cub Sport Pedals V3 Performance Upgrade Kit. Now that's a long name. <laughs> in stock form, the brake pedal on this V3 set is way too soft for my driving style. So, it's nice to have a path to upgrade to a stiffer brake pedal with less travel. As usual, Fanatic gives us a professionally packaged and finished product with all the parts you need to tweak your brake pedal and get the most comfortable setup for each sim racer using it. I did end up using the very hard combination of the bumpers, which were the two green bumpers. Also, having to dial the tensioner screw out as far as I could, but in the end, I was satisfied with the result. The bumpers themselves seem to be of good quality, and close enough as far as the variation in their hardness ratings on the shore gauge. Not too much to complain about here, really, with this kit. It just gets the job done. That said, I think it would be nice if Fnatic would include the kit with the V3 pedal set, maybe charging another $10 to $15 for their trouble. That would be fair, I think. <laughs> I'm Barry Rowland. Thanks again for watching the Sim Racing Garage channel. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you would like to support what I do here at the SRG, visit my website at simracinggarage.com.